Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Formula One today. Formula One today! Let me tweet out, etc., and put the little YouTube video live. And then we'll get cracking. Then we'll get crack a lacking. Changes on that. Oh, hang on. Let me let me mute that so that you can't hear the hear it echoing. I still need this, need to plug my controller in as well. Otherwise, I can't actually control it. I don't know yet, spicy. Because there's no there's no season progression. Like obviously, with previous iterations of the game, you've had like your own guy. You can be, create your own person and then go through a career and like get job offers from different teams, etc. But with this game, you can only drive as one like uh, an in real life guy, and obviously he can't move teams. So it's effectively we'll do the season with Nico Hulkenberg. And then we'd have to do a season, like the same season again, just in a different car. There's no progression, but hopefully we can still, you know, get enough out of it to warrant continuing, continually streaming it. I really enjoy playing it, so long may that continue. Let me just make sure that everything's gone live. Pardon me. Oh, helps if you spell streaming right, doesn't it? Spanish Grand Prix. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, that was weird. Oh, that was. You're a boss. Right, let me plug my controller in so I can actually control the game. That might help. That definitely might help. I don't know whether they've patched it yet, actually. I don't think they have. I've not seen any patch notes anywhere on Twitter or YouTube. So this is where we are currently, after four rounds of the championship. We've raced in Australia, Malaysia, China and then Bahrain last time out where we had unfortunate circumstances. Unfortunately the guy that sat one above, one place above us in the championship standings after four rounds, Daniel Ricciardo, decided it would be a good idea to spin me out after like four or five laps at, uh, at Bahrain, and we ended up being able to fight back despite really struggling with tyre de degradation. We were able to fight back to a 10th place finish, which meant that we have 19 points now, and because, as you can see bottom left, uh, our teammate Sergio Perez hasn't picked up any points himself yet so far this season, one of five drivers yet to do so, uh, then the team only has 19 points as well. But we are fifth in the uh, Constructors' Championship, which for Force India is very good. We're driving at Spain next. Spain isn't one of my better circuits, I'll be honest. I'm not that strong at Catalonia, so we will find out how we're going to, how well we're actually going to get on uh, in a moment. But we'll continue now. Everything should still be the same. Good. Check this is quickly. Good. Well, let's jump in then. Practice at Catalonia. Welcome. 
Welcome to the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for the Spanish Grand Prix. Over the next few minutes, the teams will be heading out onto this classic Formula One track for what we're expecting to be a very hectic practice session. Catalonia saw its first race back in 1991, and the drivers are really familiar with this circuit, as it's also been used extensively as a testing track over the years as well. Well, it's a fast-flowing circuit that really pushes drivers and cars to their limits. There are two DRS activation zones, but the best overtaking opportunity for the drivers is in the second DRS zone along the main straight. They may be great friends off the track, but as we well know from history, friendships are hard to sustain whilst you're battling it out for supremacy within a team. How's the relationship between Seb and Kimi surviving under these pressures? I think Kimi enjoys working with Seb. They certainly feel comfortable around each other, but don't let that laid back exterior fool you. Kimi is still the Iceman, and he'll want to assert himself against the four-time world champion and prove that he can come out on top. Right. Let's set the game up properly, shall we? Now that we're in. Uh, it's on PC, uh, Cave. I'm on PC, Jake. I'm on PC. Sorry, I only just clicked that it was you. <laughs> I just glanced at the chat. Let me just make sure that everything's set up properly next to me. And then we can crack on with practice. Uh, well, we might as well go out on a set of options. Considering, yep. Let me quickly switchly, switchly, quickly switch it to full screen again, so that I can get rid of the screen tear. There we go. Screen tear's gone. That's the best way for me to check whether they're screened or not is to call for this tablet because in this in this like little mini cutscene of the uh, engineer coming over, that's when I get most of my screen tear. So, wait, let's have a look. There are it is quite busy out on track right now, but if we go out soonish, we might be able to actually create a bit of space between ourselves and the first drive that went out, which looked like it was Valtteri Bottas. Uh, option, there are two, uh, any given race we can put in, you use, you have to use two different sets of tyre compound if you're running in the dry. Effectively, it, there are four different types of dry tyre compound. I'm not really too sure why the car speared left there. You get super soft, which are the red marked tyres, soft, which are the yellows, mediums, which are the whites, and shut up engineer and hards which are the orange stripe tire uh, at any given circuit you'll have two of any of those four that are available and the softer of the two compounds will be the quicker tire but it also degrades faster so here the option tire is the softer of the two for any given weekend the option tire here as you can see is the white striped medium tire and then the prime tyre, which is always the harder and slower of the two compounds. Here is the orange striped hard tyre. So they're the, they're the two comp... The, that's what... When I speak about option tyres, I'm on about the, soft, the softest version of the compound that is available at this weekend. It makes it easy... Rather than saying super soft, soft, medium, hard, that's why the engineers refer to them as prime and option, because it just, you know, gives you two things to say rather than four. So the, the option tyres this weekend are these white striped mediums and then the prime tyres are the hard compound which are the orange striped tyres. It's just the, the way to refer to them. And in, in the race, if there is only dry running in the race, then each driver has to use at least one set of each compound. So say you start on the mediums, you have to, or start on the options, you have to, by the end of the race, as long as it stays dry, at least do one stint on the prime tyres. 
if it rains at any point and you have to switch to inters, then that goes out the window and you could obviously go uh, option, option, intermediate, or say option, intermediate, option. Well, Catalonia is not one of my better circuits, to be honest. We haven't played this, I haven't touched it over the weekend, so I'm a little bit rusty. Obviously, we play, we streamed it through three days in a row last week, which is fantastic. I think I streamed it Monday, no, I streamed it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, didn't we? I streamed it on release day last Friday. And I think I streamed it Monday, yeah, we streamed it Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because I'm just enjoying this game so much. I'm sure if you have any questions in the chat, then uh, other people in the know will be able to uh, to answer them for you if I can't, you know, if I'm busy driving and can't glance down at the chat, then there will be people to answer questions for you. Yeah, but how long will we stay, P2? That's the thing. Saying Rosberg's done a 23 second lap, pretty sure that that's going to be a 1.23 rather than 23 seconds, unless that's 23.716 for this first sector, which it actually may be. Yeah, pretty slow though in this Force India right now. I'd like, I'd, to be honest, because I'm not that good at Catalonia, I would be happy with any sort of points from this race weekend. We have scored points in every single race that we've driven in so far this season. Finished 7th in Australia and picked up 6 points. Then we finished 5th in Malaysia and picked up a further... Get around that corner, a further 10 points. Then we finished. Fine, thank you. Then we finished ninth in China and picked up two points, and then tenth in Bahrain and picked up another point. Hence, we have 19 for the season. Twenty-seven eight is my fastest so far. Now I'm pretty sure I can go faster than that. Let me just concentrate for a lap and try and make sure I get all my braking points right. That was a purple pe uh, sector one, which is good. If a sector goes purple, it means it's your personal best for that sector. See if we can put in a purple second sector. We can't. Okay, that's not a problem. I'll cut this corner slightly. I actually much prefer this circuit, or much prefer this final third sector when there wasn't this extra bit, when it just carried straight on there and it was a full, full sprint all the way around that, that one corner down to the next corner, rather than actually cutting that bit, that third sector in half. I much preferred it before they made those alterations, personally. 27 dead, that's quicker. Hey Sergio, there's my teammate on my right hand side. Too, don't worry. That was another purple sector one, so we're getting quicker and quicker, which is good. Oh, I got that wrong. I got that really wrong. Never mind. There goes that lap.
Oh, I said I was going to fit in, but I kept going. Lol. Come on. So the rear left tyre is already starting to go off after four laps. Something to bear in mind for when we get to the race. We need to know how long these option tyres are going to wall last in at uh, full pell. And we have been effectively been driving flat out for the entirety of this stint. So I think the option tyres are only going to last six or seven laps, which could be a problem when we get to the race. I'm not sure how many laps there are at Catalonia on 50% race distance. They are catching up the Ferrari though. Keeps throwing up cheeky puffs of smoke at me as he's locking his tyres. Maybe we're not quite as slow as we thought around here. But I'm not sure what tie compound he's on, he might be on the hards. I don't think he's close enough. Yeah, he's on, I think he's on the hard tyres. Well, we'll pit in. We've done a decent stint on these, the fuel's running out, so... The tyres are starting to go. You do get given an extra set of option tyres for practice, which is good. So you can just kind of burn it around and it doesn't really matter too much. It should be about 33 laps spicy, yeah. I, I use a pad, lols though. I drive with my Xbox One controller. The longest race in the F1 calendar, uh, lap count wise, is Monaco, but longest race in terms of distance is Belgium, I think, or Singapore. Actually, it might be Singapore. See, the Belgium, well, no, Singapore's the longest in terms of time, but I think longest in terms of distance is Spa in Belgium, and then the longest in terms of lap count is Monaco. Are we genuinely that fast then? Oh shit, myself and Nico put in exactly the same time as the 27 dead. Are we gen we can't surely be genuinely that quick in a Force India. I don't know whether they might have all been on hard tyres though, like we say. We saw Vettel was on hard tyres, so the rest of the, rest of the grid might, or rest of the uh, people out there right now might be on hard tyres, which obviously means they're going slower, because the the softer compound, the medium tyres that we've got this weekend will be quicker than the, the harder tyres that they were all running. A wild Pluto appears. VIP. Hey bro. Thanks for joining the stream, pal. F1's not really that popular in the States, is it? Pluto's uh, a Twitch employee, so be kind to him in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody does go on harder tyres for practice, and I don't really know why. Because you get given an extra set of soft compound tyres. Or mediums, obviously, they are this weekend fresh set of options. Nobody's at, doesn't look like anybody's going to go quicker than us though. Bottas has taken Raikkonen. Lewis has just put in, oh no, Vettel's just popped in right at the end. He's been fastest today, but it's only practice. He'll be wanting to repeat that pace tomorrow when it comes to qualifying. So, the faster time for Vettel, a 126.9 on hard tyres is actually a decent shout. That's a good lap, but 
it appears, unless everybody else were caught in traffic on their options, that we are genuinely fast around Catalonia. Nico put in an absolute storm at 25.9 towards the very end of the session. That completely ob obliterated the time that he previously put in that was level with ours. Here we are at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia for the start of today's qualifying session. It won't be long now until we're ready to join the action down at trackside. Spain is one of those tracks that can create unexpected results, so it's very difficult to know who might be strong here in today's qualifying. If you can put together an efficient package with a good compromise between downforce and straight line speed, you can catch the other teams out here, just like Pastor Maldonado did back in 2012. Ferrari have a good track record at this circuit, but my money is on Mercedes to have a strong qualifying session here today. My money would probably be on Mercedes as well, to be completely honest. Uh, Puddin put an absolute essay in the chat. I just want to check and see what it said. Uh, so what I heard the commentator say was effectively that, as well as assuring the safety of other drivers, officials, etc., that the gaps in the drivers would be evened out due to everyone having to stick to a speed limit. But surely that wouldn't happen because that would presume that for a start everybody was driving the same speed with all the virtual cars initiated. Oh, you're on about virtual safety cars? There is no safety. Well, for the sake of this game, there is no, there is no safety cars on. Uh, there is no safety car on F1 2015, which is a shame, because obviously you want a game to be as realistic as possible, and there is no safety car on this game, which sucks. Uh, but effectively, obviously, I presume you know what a, just a normal safety car is. The sa like, if there's an accident and there are marshals on track, and a car needs to be um, recovered then the safety car will come out and everybody will have to go around behind the safety car at a slower speed but the thing that has been a problem with the normal safety car over recent years is the way that that works once everybody is behind the safety car and everything is um, everything's clear out on track as in the marshals are off the track and a crashed car has been recovered etc then the safety car lets all the lapped cars pass again so that they're back on the lead lap and then the safety car comes in and everybody races around. Whereas with a virtual safety car, it uh, gives drivers... They don't have to drive at exactly the same speed, but they have to drive to a minimum lap time. So they have to say the normal lap time around here is one minute, like we just did a one minute 27 in practice. They'd set the minimum minimum lap time of two minutes. Or something similar. I don't know what the difference is between you know a normal lap and a virtual safety car lap, but they set you a minimum lap time, so you cannot go faster around any point of the track than that minimum uh, lap time, and it just keeps everybody going at around about the same speed. Because obviously, you no, know, they're race drivers; they're not going to want to lose any time to anybody else, so they're all going to try to hit that minimum lap time. But that minimum lap time is slow enough so that they won't be going fast enough to cause any significant danger to themselves, spectators, officials. Marshals, etc., and that saves. And obviously, with a virtual safety car, it just means everybody stays in the position on the track that they are at present, so that you don't have to worry about letting lapped cars pass. And then the safety car comes in, and everybody goes again. You're just going around. You'll get a notification on your dash, and it will say virtual safety car, and you stick to the lap time. And then it will say, uh, it will say green flag. Everybody's racing, and then you can speed up again. That's effectively what a virtual safety car is, and it saves the time of having to have a safety car come out, everybody catch up to it, follow it round, let the lapped cars pass, etc., and then push on again. You can just slow down for a little bit and then speed up again. And they brought the virtual safety car in after there was the uh, massive accident with uh, Jules Bianchi, unfortunately in October, that ended up taking his life a couple of days ago. And yeah, the FIA announced today that they are retiring uh, Jules's number 17. So nobody will have the number 17 in an FIA uh, officiated competition. The track is immediately very, very busy. I might wait until it dies down a, sec a bit. There's 13 cars out on track right now. The session, as you can see, bottom right, is set to be completely dry all throughout so we'll be okay 
In fact, what we could do is go out about now, because there was a big gap behind the uh, Madame Russia's. Yeah, people weren't sticking to a speed limit. They were just they stick to a they stick to a time gap, effectively. Right, if that was one of the Marushas, oh, I think these two are the Marushas, please be the manners, then we should be, should have a decent gap behind us now. And in front of us. It's weird, whenever it, the pit assist brings you out of the garage, it just spears you left there for some reason, I don't know why. If these are the manners, I don't think they are actually. That's a Mercedes, well I will let Lewis go. Go on son, I know I'm kind of on the racing line, are you going to go past me? Let me drop off the racing line. Cool, I dropped off the racing line to let Marcus Ericsson go, and he decided to drive into the back of me instead. Let's flash back to here. I will, whoa, I'll pull off the racing line so Lewis can go through. And then we'll let Marcus Ericsson through. This time, hopefully, he won't drive into the back of me. And let's see, there's a big gap behind this next car, so I'll let... Yeah, that's the Marussia. I knew there was a Marussia at the back of the back of the train. We just didn't quite time coming out properly, but there you go. We'll let Roberto and Mary go past. And then we've got a big gap behind us. We'll warm the tyres up around the rest of the lap. Uh, Jules was a young Ferrari driver, yeah. The, the overall plan was that t at the end of his career, or, you know, throughout he was, his career, he was going to take a race seat at Ferrari. Not necessarily at the end of Kimi's contract currently, but at some point in the future. Because he was genuinely a very fast driver and a very skilled driver. Um, the Force India has a Mercedes engine in it. Force India has a Mercedes engine, so we do have the fastest power unit. And now we'll go for a lap time. We know we can do a 127 dead in practice. Can we beat that in quality? That's the question. This, of course, on the right-hand side just here is where Lewis Hamilton, not Lewis Hamilton, where Fernando Alonso had his accident in uh, pre-season testing that meant that he missed the Australian Grand Prix. Coming round that long right-hander back there, turn three. Went off right into the wall. And the objective is to qualify at least 12th, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to manage that. I'm actually catching this... Manor up again, unfortunately. I tried to leave as much of a gap as I could, but clearly Roberto Mary isn't quite fast enough. I ham hammer the uh, brakes on. I've never been able to get that corner right at the, bo at the end of the back straight. I'm going to have to speed up, Roberto, otherwise, I'm going to catch you through this back bit. A little bit of dust off the uh, off the curb. I might get a little bit of slipstream here, although the line is there. 126.4. Wow, that was a very fast lap. Oh, I over, over committed there. 126.4 is significantly faster than we went in practice. I'm not really too sure why we went so much faster. Maybe it's just practice on the track. Get my breaking points, turning points, and I'm genuinely just getting faster as the uh, as the weekend goes on, perhaps. So what was it that Nico did? It was at 25.9, wasn't it, that was the fastest time in practice? Five, 
I told you I could never get that fucking corner right. Twenty-five four is what Lewis has put in. I'm going to come in for a fresh set of options, and then we'll go again. Put a fresh set of tyres on, and then we'll go for it. So far, I have edited together the first two races that we've done. I have edited Australia and Malaysia. I'm in the process of finding the time to edit China, and then I'll edit Bahrain, and then this one, and then they'll start to go up on the second channel. Well, obviously, because they take so long to edit, and I at present don't have the time to edit them, I want to make sure I've got at least a little bit um, a little bit of footage saved up before I start to upload them because the last thing I want to do is start to upload the thing the championship and then be like here's one race and then two days later here's another race and two days later here's another race and in three weeks until you get the next one that seems pointless but let's put on a fresh set of option tyres and see if we can go, for, go faster 9% are wear on, those, on that set Thanks, buddy. Let's put this set on. And then we'll go out. The track's very empty right now, so we will go out for a lap. I think Valtteri Bottas will go to Ferrari, although I would love Nico Hulkenberg to get the chance in a fast car. Because he is a very, very fast driver. He just has never gotten the the break in a quick car. Yeah, FM will definitely be returning. I'm just really enjoying streaming F1 right now. And whilst this is, whilst this game is new, and it's still getting the viewer numbers, then it'll, I would be silly not to stream it, especially considering I'm enjoying it so much. I've been streaming FM every weekday for like five months. It's nice to have a break and play something else. Obviously, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to start streaming during the afternoons. And I'll stream games like Formula One and The Witcher, etc. in the afternoons and then still stream FM in the evenings. But I'm going to put up a video on the, on the channel, on my YouTube channel, on the Chesna Gaming channel over the next week or so that will explain everything that's going to go on with that. Right, here we go. Uh, this will be our last flying lap of qualification. Let's make it count, shall we? Just missed my turn in for that. Turn seven. In it round here. I think I wiped out that sign then. Well. Five minutes left in the session. Time sponsored by Rolex. A lot of dust on that curve back there. A lot of dust. Everybody seems to be kicking it up. And the 26555. A 
I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can go a little bit quicker. If I if I'm not quicker through sector one or two here, then I will just abandon this lap and come in. It will stick with one twenty six four. It's not a purple sector one, though we were eight tenths up apparently on our best time according to the thing on the left. No, not eight tenths, it was eight thousandths. Point zero zero eight. That was a much better turn seven that time around. A lot tighter to the apex then. See what the split says in the top left when we go past this checkpoint. Five tenths up. Or five tenths down, so to speak. That qualification session done. I'm quite happy with P5 to be honest. Looks like Lewis might get pole unless something drastic happens in the remaining three minutes. Uh, no, I won't be getting a wheel, Cameron. doing what? We're still P5, there's a, big gap, there's a big gap to the Red Bull there of Ricardo of over four tenths. So that's nice to see. We'll accelerate the rest of the last two minutes of the session. Lewis is four tenths up on the rest of the field. Unless anyone else can improve towards the end? Mm, nobody in the top four has improved. Bartas has gone a little bit quicker. a perfect end to the day for Lewis Hamilton. He'll be on pole now for tomorrow's race. Well, he's got to be pleased with that. He's worked hard for it and deserves a result. He'll now turn his sights to tomorrow for what should be a very exciting race. Definitely pleased with fifth on the grid. The objective is complete because obviously they wanted us to qualify at least 12th. A teammate met the objective as well, Sergio Perez, qualifying in 12th. Only 0.3 of a set, or just under three tenths. Uh, no, just over three tenths, sorry, uh, outside the top ten. So he may be able to sneak into the points if there's a retirement or if he can make up a couple of places with some good racecraft or strategy. We might stand a chance of getting both teams, in, both teams, both cars in the points again. Although, to be fair, I said that at Bahrain and then Daniel Ricciardo spun me out, so we'll have to wait and see what happens in the race. <laughs> Welcome to the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya here in Spain for what is expected to be a very closely contested race. Lewis Hamilton starts on pole today and with the blistering pace he's shown all weekend long, it shouldn't come as a surprise if he leaves the opposition in his wake during the race today. He's definitely going to be difficult to beat today, but anything can happen, so we'll have to keep a close eye on how this unfolds over the course of the race. It was a disappointing race last time out for Lewis Hamilton. He needs to bounce back today. In the pre-race interviews, he's been talking a lot about the importance of mental strength and not dwelling on problems and bad performances. Lewis can wear his heart on his sleeve and at times is led by his emotions. I think since his move to Mercedes though, he's showing a greater level of maturity, which is helping him become more consistent in his performances. So, race strategy. I reckon it's a three stop if we start on options. We could two stop if we start on primes. Hmm. Decisions. It reckons that it's going to be a longer 
race time from start to finish. If we start on primes. But I don't know. I'm tempted to start on the primes, you know. Tempted to start on the hards and try and go for a two stop and let the tyres last rather than doing a three stop. I think I'm going to go for a two. I'm going to go for a two stop. But before we do the two stop, I need to go and do a number one because I need a wee. So <laughs> I will be back in a couple of moments and then we will race the Spanish Grand Prix. BRB. Right, let me tweet the stream out. Just say we're about to get underway. We'll see if we can boost the numbers again. It'd be nice to be back over 300, if we possibly could tonight. Glad that the cameraman has arrows telling me where the course is. That those little arrows on the track are to help me know where the braking points are. Just to give you a rough idea of what sort of speed you should be doing through the turns. As opposed to letting you know which way the corner goes. <laughs> right. We'll start on primes then. I'm going to have to pause it though and put myself back on full screen. There we go. Are we ready? We're starting on the hard tyres. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go at the circuit to Catalonia. That's a decent start actually, Raikkonen's not had a very good start. Bottas has flown up behind us, he's already looking like he might go past the Red Bull. I'm going to try and have a cheeky look up the inside of Kimi here if I can into turn one. And I'm going to leave some racing room on the left because he's still there. But now we've got the inside line into turn three. And we're oh, drifting very far wide. The car just does not want to turn there. 
really, really cold tyres starting on these hards, but we have made a place up into fourth. Again, the car, the tyres, these hard tyres are not warming up very quickly at all. Give me no grip whatsoever through those opening few turns. We had a great start and got ourselves in front of the Ferrari Kimi, but unfortunately he's been able to take us back again. But if they keep fighting behind us, we should be able to open up a little bit of a gap between ourselves and them. Although it looks as if Bottas has finally been able to force his way past the Red Bull and stay there. No DRS obviously for the opening two laps, which will help us at least stay in front of the cars behind us for the time being, as long as he's not going to catch me on the main straight, which he may do, Bottas, because I'm not the best at getting an exit out of the, uh, the final couple of turns. We are going to be holding some, some drivers up here because obviously we're on the slower tyre. We're looking to go longer in this first stint. The Ferraris and the Mercedes will, as they normally tend to do, disappear down the road in front of us because they are much faster than any other team, to be completely honest, those two. But we have a bit of a gap to Bottas. He's coming, you know. He is coming up very fast behind me. That's without DRS as well. Brakes, please be warm. He gained up like that without DRS, so you know, with DRS, Bottas is going to be flying past me, unfortunately. 50 kilograms of fuel remaining. There's 50 kilos of fuel left. But the Williams is very slippery in a straight line. They've always had good straight line speed, the Williams. So, we know that it was always going to be difficult to keep the Williams behind us. In actual fact, wherever Massa is back there, he'll be probably trying to force his way past a couple of the Red Bulls in front of him as well. Obviously the Red Bulls running the Renault engine which gives out a, a lot less brake horsepower. It's about 80 brake horsepower the difference I think. Between 60 and 80 which is a lot at this at this level of competition. It's a big amount of power to give away to your opponents. But we do have the Mercedes engine but obviously the Williams has better aero than us. And like we've mentioned we're on the slower tyre but they will have DRS from the next lap, so we're going to have to really get on the defensive into turn 1 and turn 9, not turn 9, turn 10, after both DRS sections, but he's a lot closer to us this time, Bottas. And it's only going to be a matter of time before he flies past me. I'm going to go defensive, so I've got the inside line, but he's too quick. You see the difference between the, the Red Bull and the Williams there? Ooh. Oh, we might still be able to fight the position back if I can get the inside line. No, he's just got much better traction than me coming out of that second corner. But the difference there in the straight line speed between the Williams and the Red Bull behind was ridiculous. The Red Bull wasn't really catching us, whereas the Williams just drove straight past me. They want me to... I'm not sure what lap they want me to pit on with these tyres. I think it was lap 12 or 13-ish. Check, yeah, pit 13. So we've got to do another 10 laps on these tyres, which will be okay as long as we can look after them. A bit of dust brushed up by uh, Valtteri Bottas there, but he's just disappearing into the distance now as well. Obviously, the Force Indias stereotypically aren't one of the faster cars, especially this year. Although, with the updates they made in real life at Silverstone, they actually had a very good Grand Prix. But in real life, in these opening five or six races, Force India was finishing, you know, 15th, 16th because they just weren't very fast. So we are definitely batting above our average by uh, being in fifth position in a Force India. He's going to have DRS on me, I think. Although it might not. I'm not sure what the gap was there. We'll find out when we go across the line what the gap is. It's 0.7 seconds. He is going to have DRS. He's not, he's not closing that much. I don't know when tyre wear is going to become a factor for the AI cars, because I presume a lot of them are going to be on the option tyre, which means their tyres will start to go off a lot quicker than mine. Anywhere yet? Oh no, my left, the left front and left rear are just slightly tainted yellow now. But in the options, they were a lot more uh, yellow by this point. 
in practice. It's going to have DRS down this little straight, but if I get defensive into this turn 10 here, we should be able to hold the inside line and keep him behind. Which we have managed to do. There are a lot of right-handers in this at this circuit, which obviously makes it or puts a lot more pressure on the, uh, the left-hand side tyres, which is why they go off first. You see, the left tyres are definitely... I can hear a car. There he is. He's on the options, and he is definitely quicker than us. Got me with DRS. And his left tyres doing that glitch still, so they still haven't patched that. Won't, wouldn't grip around there. And now I've got Grosjean on the inside of me for company. I'm going to have to... Where is he? He's right there. Oh, Roman, you're going to get through now, aren't you? Oh, and we've lost the place to Massa as well. Oh, these cars are faster than us. So it's no real surprise. But I did make a couple of mistakes. I was planning on not necessarily losing three places in the space of a couple of corners. Massa's getting held up here by the Lotus of Grosjean, though. As you saw the way that Bottas disappeared in front of us when he overtook us. We would expect to be getting overtaken. Being on the hard tyre, and they're all on the faster off option soft top or medium compound. Don't know whether I'm going to have DRS down the straight here. I'm not sure whether I was close enough to Massa there. We weren't, and Button's going to have DRS. Try and pull away from Button here if I can. Create a bit of a gap between myself and the McLaren. Although again, I think he's on the option tyre, so he's going to be going a little bit quicker than us, perhaps. Now you would expect their tyres to start going off around about lap eight or nine, whereas ours might last a little bit longer. Although they are all yellow now. burning extra fuel to try and catch me up and overtake me. She may do down the straight. I'm not sure how fast the McLarens are in a straight line, to be completely honest. I guess we'll find out now. Won't we, Jensen? This is DRS. He is coming, so we'll go defensive. We should be able to hold that there, which we have been quite comfortably, which is nice. Oh no, teammates, teammates retired already. That sucks. I don't know whether he's crashed or whether there's been a mechanical fault or what. It's lap seven. You'll have to remind me. At the end of the race, I'll have a look at the replay and we'll see what happened to, uh, to our teammate on lap 7, whether he had an accident or whether it was just a mechanical fault or what. Now, I'm racing on expert difficulty though, I just glanced at the chat briefly and saw you asking the question. Trying, but he's got quicker tyres than me. <laughs> Some 
Nobody's pitting yet. Oh, someone's pit. Look at this. Sebastian Vettel. We are going to go ahead of a Ferrari. So they start, the front runners are starting to pit already on their option tyres, and we're going to be able to go a little bit further. Now is where we start to make ground on everybody else. You see how Vettel's just completely slowed everybody up there with cold tyres as well. This is only helping our race in the long run, because obviously we're going to get ground on the cars behind us that haven't pit yet as well. Vettel will go back above us when we pit, but if we can have an extra window behind, ahead of the cars behind us, and it gives us extra uh, scope for mistakes, etc. Thank you, Sebastian. That's really helped me out, actually. Start to close me up now that his tyres are starting to warm up, and the fact that he's in a Ferrari and I'm in a Force India. Probably going to have DRS. 0.6 seconds, definitely going to have DRS. Here he comes. He's not close enough just yet, though. We have overtaken a couple of extra cars now that they've gone in the pits as well to swap their tyres out. Sebastian is right behind me now. This is negatively affecting his race, but it's only helping mine. So that's completely fine by me. Sorry, bro. German versus German, Nico versus Sebastian, but There's 40 kilograms of fuel left in the tank. 40 kilos of fuel. It's working out in our favour so far. Although he may have a good old crack at me down here with DRS. I'm gonna drift across to the left hand side, go defensive, but he's gone for the inside line. I'm gonna have to go for the switch back if we can make it work. But he's got better traction than me on his fresher com fresher tires. Sebastian is past. But we now have a much bigger gap to the cars behind us, so that is not a problem at all. And he didn't actually he didn't go onto the hards. He's on the mediums again, so he's gone he's gone option option here. Sebastian. Overtaking another couple as we go past here. Who was that? Nico Rosberg, we're now ahead of one of the Mercedes, if not both the Mercedes, thinking about it, maybe. If Bottas has gone into first place. And that again is going to slow up some of the cars behind us. So things are really working in our favour right now. And it looks as if there's a slow moving car in front of us. Either that or they both come out, the Mercedes has just come out of the pits. I think that's, that'll be Lewis, because Nico's behind us. So Lewis is, at, at the minute, completely holding up Sebastian Vettel. Nope, I've only got to do two more laps, and then we'll be okay. I don't mind coming in on lap 12. a little bit too much speed through there. Okay, about a quarter of our starting fuel has now been used, so that's three quarters remaining. Three quarters. Now do I go on to primes next and then end the race on options, or do I do try and do a really fast middle stint on options and then end on primes again? Let me know in the chat, because we've only got about a lapse time to make that decision. We're now up to third, though, as other cars have pit. That will be Button. Itch 
my eye, which I'll scratch quickly before Nico tries to find his way past me. We'll have the inside line into turn five though, which is good. I'm going to go defensive just to make sure he doesn't. Oh, whoa. I was going to say, just to make sure he doesn't get past. We'll force him wide. There we go. We'll stay ahead. Thank you. Sorry, Nico. Nico versus Nico. German versus German again. Lewis Leiden, as we saw, which means Bottas is pit already. He's going to have DRS here, so I'm going to go defensive. Oh, then my tyres just don't want to stop. Where is he? There he is. That's fair enough. We can probably let him through now. I say let him through. He took that place himself because my tyres are gone. You reckon option first? Go options, then primes, then. Yeah, well, let me have a proper look at the chat now. We've got a straight. Most of them will have the prime for the last stint. So if we go prime, prime option, we that's a good point. If we go prime, prime option, we'll be on the faster tyre when they're all on the slower tyre. And that's a good sell. Maybe we'll try that. We'll try and go to lap 24-25 on the next set of primes. When I get onto the straight, down to turn 9, I will select my... Uh, well, this is straight down to turn 10. I will select my, my uh, compound. Actually, I might be able to do it here. Let's go primes. I'm going to box this that way. Where is he? Where is he? He's right behind me. The car will not turn. Then my tyres are pretty... Well, my rears are going red now. Car just snaking as I put my foot down. So There's just no rear grip whatsoever. So we will fit. Thank you very much. Give me them no tyres. Give me them no tyres. We'll go prime prime options. See how we go. I want a stop that's under two seconds. Under three seconds. Sorry, please. Under three, under three, 2.399. Exactly the same time as our pit stop, first pit stop in Bahrain. Up to speed now. Let's get some heat into those tires. He goes NASA past us, but he's still behind us though, so we haven't lost any any positions. I don't think, well, other than NASA. We've come out in front of Button, which is where we were prior to the pit stops. And obviously we're gonna go longer now. Want me to stop on that 25. We'll try and make it to 25. We may have to pit on 24 though. We've got a lot of cars behind us. But if others if others are three stopping, if others are three stopping then will be okay. They're all going option, option, option prime. And we're just going prime, option, prime. And we do have about 20 odd seconds in hand with the extra pit stop. So that could really work in our favour towards the end of the race. It won't really play out won't really play out until we get to the end of the, uh, the 20s in terms of lap count. Have to go defensive again now, I think, against the uh, McLaren here. Because he is going to be quick at the end. Actually, he's not that fast. The McLarens just aren't that quick in a straight line. Which is good for me. This means I can stay ahead of him. My tyres warm up. Okay. How was that? 
absolutely slammed the brakes on there. I don't even think about it, Jensen. We've got two McLarens behind us, followed by two Toro Rossos right now. have to keep an eye on what the gap is to Felipe Nazza and see whether he's properly extending his gap over us or whether he's just slightly edging away. That was our fastest lap of the race to this point. I'm going to go defensive again to Jensen. And again, this worked in our favour. Uh, we're playing on expert difficulty rather than legendary. So I'm not that good. Or locked up there, my car just skewered left. I don't know if you saw that. It should be a few laps at least before you start feeling too many tire issues. They seem in good condition for the time being. Good. We need a bit of corner cutting. I don't know what happened there. I went to turn in and the car just oversteered like mad. Oh, my Fernando, please don't. Try the switch back. Because then I want the inside line for turn three, it's not worked. He's going to drift wide here. If I nail the throttle, we might be able to get him on the inside into turn four. Don't drive in at me, bro. Nice move. Threw myself up his inside, and rather than just... I don't think he saw me coming, in fairness. I don't think he expected the move, so I went to turn in without checking his mirrors, and just turned into the side of me. It forced us both a little bit wide. He ended up having to go off the track. I don't think he picked up any damage though, but... Is that a Ferrari? Why is the Fer there a Ferrari here? Unless he's pit again. Unless he's pit for another set of options. Which it might be actually Sebastian Vettel, because he pit on lap 8, didn't he? So he might have pit lap 8 and pit lap 6 or lap 15. Yeah, there's another car in the pits there. I'm not too sure who it is. Oh, it's Nazza. It's Nazza in the pits. So this is where our strategy comes into play. This is where they're all making their second stop, and we're staying out for at least another six laps or so. And we now we both have one stop left now that they've, they've all started to pit for their second set of options, or third set of options. Still got both the Toro Rosso's behind us. Trying 
catch Jensen back up now. I don't know what happened. Going around that final corner. A couple of laps ago. The car behaved so strangely coming out of here. It came off this curb and it just... I don't, I don't know whether I got a kick off the curb, but it just spiked me towards that inside curb and I had to just counter, counter steer a little bit and it forced me wide and onto the gravel on the left hand side of this main straight and that's what cost us the position against against Jensen. As long as we can stay in touch and distance of him. We'll be alright. Because obviously we're gonna have a pit stop in hand. Basically, rich revs for the majority of the time. I'm on my the majority of the time. I'm on my option tyres. Right that was our fastest lap of the race so far. Now this is a 50% length race though. If I had the time, I'd quite happily do sit and do 100% races, but I don't have the time at the minute. Hopefully, when I start being able to do some afternoon streams, we can do some 100% races there. Like I'll start a pro season and start doing that through the through the summer. Although, I will probably be absolutely terrible at it. I don't think pro season stuff is meant to be driven with a pad. Like no assists on Legendary. getting threatened much by Max Verstappen at all. Seems to be just okay, starting to see a bit of tire wear. chilling there behind me. Again! He's done it again! Coming around that right-hander, it's just giving me a snap of oversteer mid-corner and it's forced me wide. I have to go defensive against Max, but we should be okay. Why did you just drive into the back of me, Max? That was not clever, was it? I don't know, by the way, I keep getting snaps of oversteer around that final corner. Not doing me any favours. Trying to stay ahead of the Toro Rosso behind me. Got another three or four laps to go on this set, and then we'll switch for the options. Two of them went into the pits there. 
think Verstappen and Alonso both pit on lap 21. So they might be going on to they might be going on to the primes now for their final stint. The two that just pit behind us. There's about 12 laps left, so it would make sense. Well, they'll be going on to the tyres that we're on, which are the slower ones. And we'll be going on to the tyres that they were on, which are the faster ones. The Lotus of Grosjean closing in on us behind, though. We're starting to lose a lot of rear end grip now. to watch when I'm putting my foot down coming in and out of corners. Again it looks like what who's that in front of button? I don't know who that is in front of button. It's a it's a either a Red Bull or a Toro Rosso. I think it's a Toro Rosso. Or is it a Red Bull? I can't tell. Button's pit at least, so we're going to make another place, and I think it might be Ricardo in front of us, we'll find out when we cross the line. The tape button, it is Ricardo. Obviously we're running the opposite strategy to pretty much everyone, which actually is something that Force India tend to do quite a bit in real life as well. They tend to qualify quite well, and then run an, a different strategy and it helps them score points which is effectively what we've been doing all throughout this season so far where everyone else has done one thing we've tried to do the other to help us just work an extra few seconds down the road with strategy and it's worked so far this season we'll see if it works again today the plan is hopefully that we will come out around about where we are now and we'll finish round about where we are now, 7th or 8th. That is the, the end game. I'm going to try and get to lap 24 if I can. Because I don't think the options will last much more than 7 or 8 laps. they looking like they're all orange that was again our fastest lap of the race so we are getting quicker and one would presume when we pit for our options we will gain about a second a lap hopefully especially considering I'll be stepping it up to rich revs if we're setting fastest laps whilst on, you know, degrading tyres, then that is only a good sign for our overall pace. Go away, moth. Go away, moth! A moth just flew in my face and it's pushed me all the way wide. If you want to live, piss off. Thank you. Grosjean's really closing me up now though. Don't know what set of tyres he's on. You presume he's going to have to pit once more though. Before the end of the race. Right, we'll do one more. We'll pit on 24. Yeah, Grosjean's gone in. This is it now or never. We'll find out whether we come in in front or behind of, Sebastian, of uh, Roman Grosjean at the end of this lap. We've overtaken the Ferrari. It's Kimi as he comes out of the pits. He'll be on the hard compound tyre now, the one that we're on, the orange stripe. And we'll be going on to the white stripe, which is what they'll have all been dri driving around on to this point in the race. So they're going to be going slower 
in the final few laps and we'll be going slightly quicker but whether it'll be quick enough for us to gain a place or two I'm not sure I will try and run rich rest for as long as I possibly can without overheating my engine He's just stopped. Right, I'm going to tell him I'm going to box this lap. We'll put on some white striped medium compound tyres for the final 8 slash 9 laps. And we'll see if we can get ourselves some decent points in the championship. Here we go. Again, we want a pit stop of under two and a half if possible. Two point two nine six, that's a very good pit stop. Alright, are we gonna come out in front of Grosjean again? Where is he? Here he I think that's him coming now. I think we're going to come out in front of Roman Grosjean, so that that lap that we did whilst... He, actually, no, that's a Mauritius. We've lapped someone whilst they went into the pits. We've actually opened up an even bigger gap over Roman Grosjean. That's brilliant. So these tyres have got to last us till the end of the race. Tyres and brakes need cooling. Go easy into the next three corners, please. Tyres and brakes need cooling. Another word. Tyres have only just gone on from. Yeah, see, they're all stuck behind that Marussia right now, which is going to give us extra time, and hopefully they'll be going slower anyway because they're on the harder compound tyre. go. Right, now this lap hopefully will be our fastest yet. We are 12.9 seconds though behind Felipe Massa. So I think 8th is going to be the best we can hope for. Unless of course someone in front of us still has to pit again, which could be the case. We may have some racing to do in the final few laps. Engine's getting slightly warm. Considering we're running rich revs, you can see the engine's moved to yellow now. red hot. So one lap with rich revs, or one and a half laps with rich revs, and my engine is about to overheat. Yeah, see? 127.3. We've just gone like one and a half seconds quicker on this set of tyres. At least one and a half seconds quicker. Our previous was a 129, wasn't it? I don't know what the gap to um, well, the gap to Massa is now. It was was it 12.9 or was it 12.2? It was 12 something, wasn't it?
Yeah, these are the op this is the option compound for Lokla. We're on the medium compound now, which is the option one for this race weekend. The primes are the orange striped hards, which we've run two sets of now. Is that Massa there on the map? It's just going around the final corner now. I'm not sure. I'm still busy looking, but look at where I was going. So even if we were closing on him, we've now lost a couple of cents again. Gaps Massa is 9.1. Wow, we are closing in on Felipe Massa, even though that lap was two seconds slower than our previous one. We are definitely closing in on Felipe. We may have some racing to do in the last few laps. We can close like that on Felipe from now until the end of the race. If he's going to be on the primes and he'll be getting the worn primes as well. Seventh might be the chance. 7.66, we are so much faster than Felipe Massa right now. That's like one and a half seconds in the first two sectors alone. There he is. Just see him there going around the final corner now. We are closing up like mad on Felipe Massa. What's my engine look like? Going back to rich revs for one lap. Six and a half seconds to Felipe. Gaining on him by about two and a half seconds a lap. So if we can catch him and then get past him before our tyres go. might be able to get ourselves into 7th, get an extra couple of points. Whoa, stop looking at the chat chairs. Come here, Felipe. I want seventh place. Give me those extra two World Championship points. I want them. Engine's red hot again. Lewis still in first. There are four laps to go. Massa is right here. Surely we have to catch him. At Malaysia we were closing up like mad on Kimi in the last few laps and we couldn't quite catch him. We only needed an extra lap in Malaysia to catch Kimi Raikkonen but we might have enough time left here to catch up to Felipe Massa. We're on the same back straight as him now. The gap is 3.4 seconds with just over three laps to go. Tantalisingly close now, Matt Williams. I'm 
we'll switch to Rich again for one more lap. He's in our sights now. He's really in our sights. Hey, Felipe. I'm coming. Oh, he's so slow around there. We may even get him into turn 10. I've got DRS, but he's going to have the inside line now. Is he going to notice I'm there? He has done. I'm going to have to run wide. We'll get him down the main straight. We'll get him down the main straight, it'll be okay. Mercedes are pitting now? Why are Mercedes pitting a car on lap 31? Mercedes, yeah, look, this is Mercedes there. It's Nico. He's on hard tyres now. Can we get him? We've got Nico Rosberg. With two laps to go, Nico's pit for a set of hard tyres. What sort of strategy is that? We could even get sixth of Massa now and really give ourselves some extra points. We're in sixth. We thought seventh was going to be the highest we could... Well, we thought eighth was going to be the highest we could get. Then we found out that Massa was lapping really slowly on those hards. And then Nico stopped with two laps to go. Now Kimi's going to be too far down the road for us. But if Massa can slow Rosberg up, even though he's on fresh tyres, then we've got just over a lap to go. We could finish sixth here at Catalonia. We really could finish sixth. Mercedes have had a nightmare there. Don't know why Nico would have stopped so uh, so late. He's probably going to get him down this straight as well. Keep an eye in the bottom left on those two grey circles. Is Nico closing? He's closing on him like mad. Is he going to get him into this final corner though? No, Mass is still ahead. On the last lap, Nico Rosberg is still behind Felipe Massa. Felipe is just, he handed a seventh and he's going to hand a sixth as well by keeping Nico Rosberg behind him for the last lap and a half. Lewis has won the race. So ahead of us, we've got Kimi in fifth, then the other Ferrari is Sebastian Vettel, then presumably Bottas, Hamilton and Ricardo? Question mark? In what order? I don't know. Lewis has won the race and Kimi is fifth, but in second, third and fourth will be Bottas, Vettel and Ricardo, but in what order? I don't know. We've still got Massa behind us. He's really not got long left now to get past him, Nico Rosberg. He's going to have to make a, a lunge for it into this corner here. And he's gone for it and he's through. Nico Rosberg is up into seventh. But we've only got three corners to go. We are going to get ourselves a nice cheeky sixth place finish here at Catalonia. After qualifying fifth and racing the opposite strategy to everyone else, it's worked for us. Doing a two-stop rather than a three, going longer on the prime tyres. We are going to sweep round this final corner and get ourselves a lovely, lovely, lovely six World Championship points. No, more than that. Eight World Championship points for sixth place. Thank you very much, Felipe Massa. Still haven't patched that little glitch where it's flickering when you're in this screen, unfortunately, but hopefully that will get patched soon. It's a win for Mercedes and a win for Lewis Hamilton. The British driver was the class of the field today and fully deserves his victory. Ultimately, it's all about whoever reaches the checker flag first. And today was his day. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. 
thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. So Lewis wins. Sebastian was second, Valtteri Bottas third on the podium, and then Daniel Ricciardo fourth. We thought they were the three that were ahead of Kimi, but we weren't sure on the uh, on the ordering. I would have said, though, that they would have been in that order, with uh, Sebastian Valtteri, then Ricciardo with the Ferrari Williams, and then Red Bull, then Kimi in the sister Ferrari, and then us in the Force India. Where did... Oh, no, he didn't finish the race, did he? Sergio Perez retired after seven laps. That sucks. He's not had the best of seasons, Checo, so far. Hasn't picked up any points yet. But we are now up, or still, in 7th place in the World Championship, ahead of Felipe Massa in the Williams. But Daniel Ricciardo has opened up an even bigger gap ahead of us now. And he's got a 13-point gap on us. But I'm delighted to be in 7th place, to be honest, in the Force India. In the Constructors, we're still 5th, ahead of McLaren. But obviously, Red Bull pulling away. Danny Kvyat has only picked up 3 points all season, though, so far. So he's been really disappointing. And Sergio Perez, for us, has been even more disappointing without any points. But that is the end of the Spanish Grand Prix. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Here on Twitch, now that I've done the outro for the YouTube video, let's have a look and see what happened to Massa on lap 7. <laughs> Where is he? That's Felipe, isn't it? It's giving me a little bit of motion sickness, I'm afraid. <laughs> It wasn't Felipe we wanted to look at, was it? It was Checo. Hang on. There we go. It was Checo we wanted to have a look at. Not Felipe. What happened to him? I'm not sure whether he had an accident, because he was the only one to retire, so you would presume that it was a mechanical fault. But... I don't know why he's been so slow this season either. Oh, did he have a spin there? I might have got that completely wrong. It might have just been the camera angle. Yeah, I think it was just a camera angle. It looks as if he'd had a spin. <laughs> My eye is deceiving me. Still going with a Ferrari behind him now, who's Pitt. Giving it one to the Mercedes. He's had his pit stop, and then what happened? Are we on lap seven yet? Surely this is more than lap seven. They said that Checo retired. Oh, it's here, look. He's going really slowly here. What happened? Hang on, let's go on board. So he's fine coming into the third sector. Have a listen to the engine to see if something happened there. That's me. You are right. I'm a complete tard. <laughs> My brain! My brain! I'm actually a complete idiot. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> that was me! Oh, now I've backed out. Oh well, we won't find out what happened to Sergio. <laughs> I'm actually a complete retard. Complete retard!
<sighs> I just went full retard. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, guys. Oh, I see that you've just add, you've added a new um, a new command there, Ruben. Thank you for that. But yeah, that is going to bring that is going to bring this stream to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the support, guys. You guys have been fantastic. We had over 300 viewers for the majority of the stream again. You guys are loving Formula One right now, and I'm loving it too. We'll have mon I'll be streaming it again tomorrow. Continue to streaming it to stream it in the evenings at the minute because I am adoring this game right now. And tomorrow will be the Monaco Grand Prix. The Monaco Grand Prix. Oh, Pudding did it, did he? Thank you very much, Pudding. I appreciate that. Kappa. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. Pudding's putting my YouTube links, etc. in the chat right now. So uh, follow, subscribe to the main channel. If you want to see the footage from any of the races in this championship, then subscribe to the second channel, Chesnoid Plays, and it will go up over the next few weeks, I, I promise. I just need to find the time to edit these two-hour streams down into 10 to 15-minute watchable videos. But thank you very much for watching the stream tonight, guys. And I will, like I say, I will, be, um, I will be streaming the Monaco Grand Prix tomorrow night. So make sure you come back tomorrow at 8.45, and we'll do the Monaco Grand Prix. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.